Azure Search or AWS, um, you find the same dependency underneath them all. It's this engine called Lucene that I'm sure quite a lot of people have probably worked with. And for years, I kind of saw it knocking around, didn't really know what it did. Um, but it, it's kind of everywhere. So I took a bit of time to dig in and do some reading and, and see how it works. Uh, and I'm going to just kind of explain how something like Elasticsearch would use Lucene to index documents and then uh, run these queries. So Lucene's been around for quite a few years, since about 2000. Um, it's written in Java. It's now part of the Apache Foundation. And it's been ported to everything like C Sharp, C++. Um, the, the .NET port, Lucene.NET, is, is really stable now. It's been around. And um, according to my book that's a little bit out of date, it, it powers Dig and MySpace, and most impressively, the the Encyclopedia Britannica CD-ROM. Uh, so it pretty much has the kiss of death for anything that it powers. But actually, um, bring it up to date, and it is, it's, it's underneath all these search platforms that you probably use, like Solar, Elastic, all their products use Lucene. Uh, Azure Search is kind of an abstraction over Elasticsearch, which itself uses Lucene and uh, you know Amazon Search. And on those, you get built Facebook and GitHub, Netflix, uh, Stack Exchange, Uber. So you might have used Lucene in the last hour and you know not realized it. Uh, I build Sitecore applications for a living, which isn't as exciting as any of those things. But it does use Lucene, and that's kind of how I came into contact with it. Um, so I had to put that in. So yeah, what we're going to look at is, is <laughs> these three queries here. It kind of looks like Google, but actually these are uh, queries that you could feed into Lucene and it would do its job with them. And as software developers, we probably are pretty good at using Google uh, by now. So, you know, some of the more advanced features of these searches you probably use, like the ands and ors and parentheses, um, the filters here. Like we can, you know, within a Google document, that would just be a field and you say query that field and restrict it to this value there. Uh, on the bottom, we've got you know, something we want, we don't want to include Brewdog, so we can use minus Brewdog. Uh, it's got a date range, and if you notice, we're, we're kind of searching on pizzas with an S rather than pizza or ale instead of beer, but if you typed any of these into Google, you'd expect it to be treated roughly the same, and there's quite a lot going on underneath uh, that Lucene helps with to make sure that happens. Uh, and the biggest thing as well is that you want that to run really fast, so when you use Google, you <laughs> hit search and you just expect results to be there straight away. There's no spinner, you know, the, the expectation for search has been set by Google to be super fast. Uh, so what Lucene allows us to do is, is move as much computation as possible to the indexing step rather than querying. And that's kind of what I'm going to dig into next is that uh, the more computation we can do when we crawl a website and index that content or crawl the PDFs, the more computation we do there, the less we have to do when we're parsing queries and executing queries. Uh, so for an example, at the top, this is our bit of text on a web page. We're the coolest, and we're the coolest running and cycling club in Sheffield. <laughs> um, it's just some text. And in Lucene, we use analyzers. Uh, you know, in the .NET port, it's just a, a class. In Java, it's just a class as well. And what the analyzer does, you just feed text into it, and it tokenizes it. And you have loads of control over how you want to tokenize that text. Um, this is the most basic analyzer that Lucene uses, and it just splits the text into into tokens. There, you can see it's just wherever it finds a white space, it chops it up. And uh, you know, we could write that class in in a minute or two. It's really, really simple. But by splitting that text into separate terms, we now don't care about the order with which people search. So even though we've indexed the content as a cycling club in Sheffield, I might Google or I might uh, search for Sheffield Cycling Club. And because we've split that, we've tokenized it using an analyzer class, uh, we don't care what order those terms are added in. Um, so that's really powerful. And that, that's just one. Lucene gives us quite a few others built in that all do their job and you can build your own. Um, the top one here, you'll see words like the and in, and they're so common. They'll just be in every web page and every PDF so often that they don't really add any value to our search. So we can make an analyzer class that you feed the text in and the, the set of terms it will come out with uh, are just stripped of all the common terms. And that really helps kind of keep the index as small as it can be. The query has to do less work because there's less content to go over. 
Um, similarly, num number two, I might search for Shepherd with a capital S, you might use a lowercase s, we don't put the exclamation mark on, and we still want to match that. So when we're indexing this content, the middle analyzer just lowercases everything, scripts out the punctuation. Uh, so that way, any queries we do, we run through the same analysis process, and uh, we don't care if it's uppercase or lowercase, it always gives us a match, which is what we want. And the most interesting, I think, the third one uh, covers stem words. So um, yeah, you can probably guess what this is doing. You've got running, runner, runners, ran, all these words. I might say like a running club, you might say a runner's club. But really the root of that word is run. So this analyzer, we can just break every word down to its, to its root. Like coolest, you know, it just means cool. Cycling just can just mean cycle. So this analyzer class, uh, we can strip words down. That way it can handle like a, a big variation of queries. It doesn't matter what I type in, it will break it down to its root and always get a match. And that again allows us to handle all sorts of queries, no matter how you type these things in. And, and a really important one as well is that, you know, I might say cool, you say best, running, might say jogging. And they, we know they mean the same thing, but we can build an analyzer to add synonyms into this list of, of words that we've found in the document. So when we index this document, when, it, when we add it to the search database, as it were, um, we've inserted synonyms so that I might search for, um, you know, cool jogging club, you might search for best jogging club, but, and they would, they would all have a match. Uh, and so what we've, what we've started with on the left there is, this is the text in our original document. We are the coolest running and cycling club in Sheffield. On the right hand side is the terms that we're going to save alongside this document in our index. And it, it's quite different, like cool, best, run, jog, cycle, bike, club, group, Sheffield. It doesn't sound anything like the original, but this is what our analyzers have extracted from that text. And we've got a much more of a robust set of terms there so that we can handle queries like these on the left-hand side. Um, that are, yeah, three different written queries, but we run them through the analysis process. And, uh, you know, I don't know who writes like this, but bestest running group in Sheffield. When you analyze that, you know, we've, we've stemmed bestest to be best. Running becomes run, group, Sheffield, lowercase. Um, we've split the white space, so it's just terms. And now we've got exact matches with what we've saved in our index. Uh, so it's, it's going to have as good a match as the top one, which is just by Club Sheffield. So by indexing these documents with analyzers, um, things like Elasticsearch and Solar and all the rest of them would work exactly the same way under the hood. Uh, we're able to power loads of different worded queries. Uh, so however you end up bashing your search query in, you, you'll always get a result. Uh, and it'll happen really fast as well, so that the process of indexing the documents would take a while if you've got millions of documents. But all that crunching is happening at indexing time. Uh, so as much thinking as you can do when you're crawling and when you're indexing the documents to produce really good index terms like this means that the queries don't really have much to do at all. All they're doing is matching the word bike with the word bike and uh you know it's it really doesn't take that much time to do that and that's how you can get these super super fast queries which is what everybody wants if i used a search engine and it was doing that i wouldn't ever use it again so uh yeah these analyzer classes as much as you can use them to produce your terms will give you fast good queries uh that's it, the call to actions are, this is pretty much like the only Lucene book. I think it's so boring to most people that they don't write a lot of books on it, but uh, I really like it, recommend it. And I'm Perksy on Twitter if you wanna talk about search engines, I'm, I'm that guy. Thanks.